Hey guys, this is Cross for Double Cross Games, and today we are going to be making a simple AI that just kind of wanders around idly. Uh, we are in Unreal 4.25 with started content, and we're using the top down template since it comes with a few things that will be useful for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I like to do is go under our content. We'll make a new folder for our project. We'll call it AI, just for simplicity. And we'll right click on that, go to set color, and we can select the color I used last, or you can do new color and pick one from the spread. We'll double click there, and we are gonna start by making an actual character. We'll go right click, loop print class, and select character from the list, and we'll call them MPC base. Double click on our MPC base, drag them over here so you guys can see them, and we will immediately find out that there's not even a skeletal mesh in there. We'll go ahead and click on the mesh right here on the left where it says inherited, and then under skeletal mesh we'll just select SK Mannequin. That puts our Unreal Man up here. He's usually about 90 units too high, so we'll drop him to negative 90. Click on the uh, select rotate objects or the E key, I suppose. Rotate him 90 degrees so he's facing forward. And then on their anim class, we are going to click the drop down box. And from this huge list, we'll pick third person anim BP, which is the standard Unreal Man animation blueprint. And that is probably everything we need to do with this guy for right now. Well, let's go ahead and drop him on the stage so we can see him. Next thing we're going to need is he's going to need a brain. And for AI characters, that's going to be his AI controller. Uh, by default, it'll be AI controller, but I like making my own so I can mess with it and feel comfortable making mistakes. So under all classes, we're going to go to AI controller, and there it is right there. Select that, and we will call it MPC controller. As a general rule, always name it something other than its base name, because it is the one asset, it is the one way you can have two assets with the same name in Unreal, is if you name it the same as the base asset. And it just makes it very confusing later when you're looking for it. All right, now that we have an AI controller, we are going to need to start working on our AI character's brain a little by adding some a train of thought, if you will. So we're going to right click, and under artificial intelligence, we are going to click on behavior tree, and we'll call that MPC BT for behavior tree. And right click one more time and go to artificial intelligence and select blackboard. And we'll call that MPC BB for blackboard. And let's take a moment to kind of explain what these are. So your behavior tree is like a decision matrix for your character. It essentially allows you to ask your character simple questions such as what should you be doing right now? Or what state are you in? And then answers that question with a behavior that you want, such as if you are idle, I want you to wander idly around the stage. Pick a random location, go to that location, wait a few seconds. Pick a random location again, go to that location, wait again, which is what we're going to try to set up here. The Blackboard component that we dropped here is actually a list of Blackboard keys, which are variables that are unique to the behavior tree. And we're actually going to have to set up the keys for this behavior tree for the things that we want the AI to remember. Behavior trees are unique that every time the node runs, the variables are blank every time the, key, the behavior tree runs. But the behavior tree essentially runs on tick. So it's going to tick over and over and over, and you don't want him to forget the location that you sent him to before he gets there. So you save that location in a Blackboard key, which then can be referenced in the next node. But let's go ahead and, and show you. 
So we'll go into our behavior tree. And our behavior tree, notice at the top it says Blackboard right there. So if you click on Blackboard, there's nothing here. If you click on the drop down for the parent, we can select the Blackboard component that we picked and put it in there. And look at that, it populates your first key, a self actor object. We are going to need at least two more, but we can only do one right now. And we're going to pick vector. We'll call it destination because that's going to be where we send our character. And if we go back to our behavior tree, you'll notice that at the bottom here where it says keys, you have your keys that you already created. Now we are going to drag from this root that appears here and then we're going to pick a sequence. Now, when I dragged out of there, you notice that you had three different choices, selector, sequence, and simple parallel. Now, the ones you're going to use the most are the selector and the sequence, and they work almost the same, but with some very important distinctions that some people get tripped up about. Uh, so a sequence, as it says right there, will execute all of its children left to right, but when one of its children fails, the whole sequence fails. Whereas the selector also executes from left to right, but if one of his children succeeds, it will just keep executing that one child. It won't continue to the next one. So if, for example, we wanted to give our AI multiple states, i.e. idle versus combat versus fleeing, versus blocking, whatever, we could add what's called a service, which we will add here momentarily, to the selector to check for that state. All right, so our selector allows us to use a service, is what we're going to use, to find out what state our AI is actually in and then our sequences will check using if we right click and go to add decorator there's a whole bunch of different kinds of decorators that you can use and each of them will be an entire video if I go through them like that but the one you'll use the most is the blackboard key decorator at the very top if we select that by default it will actually create this little blue node and if you click on it you'll see on the right that it allows you to set how your uh, your flow control your aborts and your blackboard keys since we only have two keys it only lets me pick self actor and destination so let's go ahead and create a state key so that you guys can see what I'm talking about I go back up to the top level right click blueprints on the blueprints right here Go to enumeration, we'll call it state. And an enumeration is just a list. And in this case, our first one is going to be idle wander. Go ahead and save that real quick. We go back to our behavior tree here. We'll click on the blackboard real quick, and we're going to add an enum key, and we'll call it state. Now, if we click on that variable on the right side, it'll give you the variable details. You can click this little drop down here on the key type and see it lets you select the enum type. And if we type state, we'll get the state enumeration we just created. We'll go ahead and save that. Go back to our behavior tree and now notice that we have our state key under the blackboard, which means that when I click here, we can select our state from there and it'll say how do you want to do this equal to not equal to less than or equal to in this case we want it to be equal to idle wonder in order to go into this node now the second thing that these that you can add to these nodes are called services so we already told this guy 
hey, if this state key is equal to idle wander, you're going to execute everything down this row. But how does it know? Well, for starts, we need to actually put that variable in our MPC base. So we're going to go ahead and click in our MPC base. If it opens like this, you go to open full blueprint editor by clicking the little thing. Right as rain. We're going to add that variable to our character here. We'll call it state. And under variable type, we will type state again and scroll probably all the way to the bottom. And there it is, the enum we made. And we'll compile and save. And now that our MPC actually has a state variable, we can mess with it a little bit at least. So in our behavior tree, if we right click and we go to add service, uh, you'll notice that there's run EQS, which is very powerful, and just your default focus. But we want something a little more custom for what we're doing. So we are just going to cancel out of that and select new service. It's going to open like this and look at the name. It always, it always comes out like this. So the first thing you always want to do is go to your service. It appears in whatever folder you had selected at the time. Click on it and rename it something you'll remember, such as state service. Then we go back into our state service. And under functions here, you'll notice that you have a whole bunch of overridable functions. Well, we want receive tick AI for this case, because at any given point, his state can change, and we want that to be reflected in his behavior. So we want to check his state regularly. And notice that the, the node comes with a controlled pawn reference and an owner controller reference. So in this case, we just need the controlled pawn. So we'll pull right out of that, cast to MPC base. And then we are going to, from MPC base, we're going to get state. And that gives us our enum. But how are we going to save that? Well, we're going to have to add a variable to our little service here. And we're going to call that state key. Now, this is key. No pun intended. This is key that we must change this to a blackboard key selector, which is a generic holder for all blackboard keys. Once you have this blue variable, you can drag it in as a getter, drag out of it, and go and then type set as or set value as. And in this case, we want it to be an enum. We should be able to plug our state into that enum. And that is it. So now, essentially on tick, we are going to be setting our Blackboard key state to whatever the state is on the MPC. But this actual service isn't on the flowchart at all. To add it, you will have to right click in your little selector here. And under service, you'll notice that the service we just created is right here, state service. Just click it. And before I forget, you'll notice that it tells you all of its data right there. The state key, the state key variable we made make sure you actually have the little eyeball turned on otherwise it will not appear you go to the state service here and you have to select the key that goes to that key selector that we added so now when the execution goes down this line it will it'll say this is the state and then it'll start from left to right asking is the state equal to idle wonder in the since there's only one state it's always going to be true 
So then what do we want our guy to do? We want him to find a location and go there. So we're going to need a new service. This service is actually going to look for a location that he can get to and go there or set it to go there. So we'll add a new service. Same thing again. When you create a new service, it'll always come up as BT service blueprint based new. Definitely want to change that to something you'll remember like idle wander service. The reason I call it that is because that tells me what it is for. So later on, if I have dozens of, like if I have half dozen different states and they all have their own service, I'll remember which one this goes to. And we'll do the ex pretty much the same thing. We'll override receive tick AI. And under controlled pawn, we can drag our controlled pawn and do get actor location. This is going to give us our controlled pawns location in the world. And then we are going to want to get from that, say get random location. There we go. Get random reachable point in radius. So this is going to give us the ability to find a place that this AI character can actually reach within a radius that we decide. So we'll go ahead and promote this radius to variable. We'll call it radius. Hit the little eyeball because that makes it show up in our behavior tree outside. We'll compile and set it to, I don't know, a thousand so we can see him running around. Then we are also going to need a Blackboard key selector. Destination key is what we're going to call it. And we're going to make sure that that is a Blackboard key selector. I drop that sucker in. Get. And then we are going to set value as vector. We're going to plug in that reachable point in and there we go. Compile and save. And now if we go back to our behavior tree, we can right click right at the gray part where it says sequence. Go to add service and put idle wander service on there. See, decorators are go on top, services go on bottom. We click on our service and we make sure that where it says destination key, we actually say destination. We have now we now have access to our radius, which is that variable we exposed inside the service. And now all we have to do is give the guy some instructions, right? Now that I have this destination, what do I do with it? So you can drag out of this node and under tasks, you'll notice that there's some pre-made ones. So move to is already set. And look at that. If we click on that move to, it has a blackboard key. And we're going to select destination because we want to move to our destination. That can actually be an actor as well. If you want a bad guy to chase you around, you can set that move to to you as an actor or to your player character as an actor and it will follow you around. Uh, we are going to actually ignore, ignore restart self because every time this ticks, it's gonna send another, it's gonna try to move this. But if you haven't actually arrived at your destination yet, then what'll happen is it'll change your destination and you'll just keep bouncing left and right and never actually reach anywhere. So we'll ignore restart self to avoid that. I also like to add a weight because we don't want him to just bounce around. So under the tasks again, we'll select weight. 
And five seconds is actually a really long time. So we'll set this to like 1.5, give it a 0.5 deviation so that it he doesn't always wait the same. Same thing with this, ignore restart self, because if you restart a wait task, then you if, if we restart it every half a second, or every point, yeah, every half a second, then it will never actually finish waiting. So you would think that we are ready to go, and I can actually just hit play. But we are actually not running this behavior tree at all right now. One thing that we need to do that we forgot to do earlier is we're going to go into our character. And on the right side here where it says AI controller class, we have to switch over to our MPC controller. And we're going to go possess, it auto possess AI when placed in world or spawned because later on we may want to spawn him and we want him to get possessed rather than just sitting there like a doll. Compile save and we can actually close out of our MPC base next thing we're gonna jump into our MPC controller which we haven't touched at all and go to our event graph and on event begin play we'll drag out of there and we'll say run behavior tree and under our behavior tree asset or BT asset it's the only behavior tree we've created, MPCBT. Compile and save. Now, theoretically, when we hit play, or simulate in this case, we should see our guy start running around randomly. And there he goes. He waits a few seconds, maybe. Oh, he got stuck with me. There he goes. He stops, and he moves. He... All right. And that is pretty much it. He's just going to do that forever. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to put them down in the comments. And if you guys have something that you would like to see me make for the next video, please write it down in the comments. We'll go ahead and try to incorporate it into this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.